and deliver some songs for us, and then after that, it will be in hands of this Thank you. You are 
Well, let's give the musicians a hand in the And okay, God bless you, we thank you. Evangelist James, each and every one of you. It's, um, I have many messages on this morning for First Sunday, for being here. And I always have to remember to stick with the word. Amen. amen. Stick with the word of God. You cannot go wrong. Because yes, yes. see, sometimes this flesh can rise up when people rise up against you. Yes, yes, yes. And when you do that, you do the wrong thing. Hallelujah. You have failed God. Mm. But when you stick to the word of God, yes, yes. I said, when you stick to the word of God, Hallelujah. you cannot go wrong. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So it is communion today, and I can wait. I need communion. Out of all this stuff that's going on in the world, uh -huh. I needed the Lord to touch me again and know that I am being faithful to his word. And yes. I want to break bread today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here on this morning. Come on, give yourselves a hand this morning. Yeah, yeah. We're in a place where we could have been anywhere else. Yes, Lord. But I just thank God for understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Understanding. Thank you. So for those of you who have your Bibles, please stand for the reading of the word. I'm just going to read the scripture then. Going to have our hour of power. The sanctuary looks so beautiful on this morning. Thank each and every one of you for being here. But I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And this is you have it, say amen. If you don't, just say, wait a minute. I won't be before you long. Second Corinthians chapter 5 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Going somewhere with this, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. May he add up a blessing to the reader and hear and definitely the doer of his word. Amen. And I say that because as we get ready to take on the Lord's Supper, Amen. sometimes people don't want to let old things pass away. Sometimes people don't want a new thing. Amen, amen. So let me stay with the word. Mm. Is that all right? Amen. Why do we need the Lord's Supper? And I want y'all to think about this because on today when we take the Lord's Supper and we break bread, becoming as one, we got to hold on to that. Amen. I really need us to hold on to that because a lot of times people can just speak out of their mouth, say things, make it sound good, rhyme and reason, but they really don't have it in their spirit. Hallelujah. Because as soon as we walk out of the house of God, we can get into a whole mess of trouble. Yes, yes. But why do we need the Lord's Supper? Mm. I say that because we need God. Amen. First of all, we need God. We need the Bible. We need Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need the gospel of Christ. We need the baptism into Christ. We need the church of Christ. And I say that because we need to have the Holy Spirit in us. If we had the Holy Spirit in us, so many people wouldn't be so mean. I say that because I said it before and I'm not using, using plagiarism, but I love how T.D. Jake said it where he said, God, you said, love your people. 
But then he said, God is your children. And he's talking about the children that's supposed to be Christians. And I say that in a way, because how can Christians be so mean to one another? How can they not have an understanding? How can they not be on one accord? We already know where the world is coming from, and no Christian is perfect, not one. But if we got the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit in us, we should be able to say, okay, my brother, okay, my sister, let me bear your burden. But I want to turn my attention to the communion. I say that because, like I said, I had many, many messages this morning, and I was going to come from the hip and give you this thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful word, which I'm going to do, but I'm going to make sure that is the is the infallible, unadulterated word of God. Hallelujah. So I just want to teach a little bit today. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we turn our attention to the Lord's Supper, we also known as the communion. Yes. The breaking of bread, the Eucharist. From the Greek Eucharistio, giving thanks, which Christ did at the time of his institution. Yes, yes. It's the Lord's Supper. It's a simple, it's a simple act. Simple act with Christians. Yes, Lord. We partake of the living, unleavened bread. Yes. And drink of the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the vine. Right. Imagine that, the fruit of the vine. Yes. But we do this together as a assembly for a very purpose. A very purpose. And that is to be on one accord, to love one another, to know that we are all in this together. There is no division. There is no confusion. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. But why do we need the Lord's Supper? <laughs> I suppose one could say simply because it's instituted by the Lord himself. You can see it in Matthew 26 and 26 through 28. But it's an observance of the command <laughs> by the Lord. But even for a stronger appreciation for the supper and a great commitment to keeping his observance. See how the observance of this or the supper is the biblical evidence which was done doing on the first day of the week. See in the traditional church we do it on the first Sunday but every time you come into the house of God you can have communion if you want to. We have to stop being so traditional because when we're so traditional it causes traditional problems. But what the word says, whenever you want to commune with him, you can. And some of us need to commune more than once a month. Hallelujah. To get you back on focus, get you back on the right track. And I say that because when it comes to the church, even in Corinth, they was coming together to eat the Lord's Supper. But they was abusing it. You can read it in 1 Corinthians 11 and 17. The instructions concerning the collection. Suggests that their coming together was on the day of the week, that first day. But in the historical evidence, the earliest historical evidence outside the Bible confirms that the day and frequency was the Tendach. You can see it in 95 AD. And I say that because when it comes to religious scholars, they confirm that it was a practice that they have done. Yes. But I'm glad when you say that sometimes, yes, I went to school and we got my doctrine in theology and biblical studies, but first off, I was blood bought and Holy Ghost taught. Yes. Amen, somebody? Because these titles and positions and elders and bishops and overseers and all that, if you, what are you overseeing if you don't have nothing to see? What are you a bishop for and you want titles as a minister and you're not having no fruit? Why do you want a position in the church and you're not going out evangelizing? Amen. Too traditional. People want to be puffed up. But we also proclaim that our faith of the Lord's return. And I say that because it's, as it says in 1 Corinthians, for the Lord has done till he comes. If we don't believe he's coming, why should we keep the supper if we don't believe? And some people really don't believe. Some people just say they're Christians. They say they go to church. They want to put on a suit and tie. They want to look good. But how is your heart? 
Yes. How is your heart? And I say that because I want to stay in scripture, but it's so, it, 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 it just bothers me on how we, we can say Christians and we love my brother, we love our sister, but then there's always some confusion. And all I can do is say it's a counterfeit Christian because if you keep your mouth shut and just listen to what they have to say, you might learn something. You might know that they just need prayer. You might know that they've been hurt already by another pastor. They've been hurt already by other titles. And all you have to do is listen to them and say, brother and sister, let me pray with you. Amen. Go to God. Don't ask me. Don't ask the elder. Don't ask the minister. Go to God. He will direct you. Hallelujah. But it's a time of reflection. Yes. Examine oneself. Amen. Can you imagine that? Examine oneself. Everybody in here should be waking up in the morning and looking in the mirror and be like, you know what? I love myself. Yeah. God loves me. No, I didn't go look, wake up like I looked last night going to sleep, but God loves me. I'm beautiful. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. And no devil in H-E-L-L is going to come against me. Why? Because I'm the child of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords.